What does the first commandment require of you? Well, that's the question that we're going to look at in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It is Sunday, the Lord's Day, the best day of the week, July 12th, 2020. I, I pray that you're delighting in today. If you're watching, listening to this devotion on the Lord's Day, or perhaps if you're preparing for the Lord's Day tomorrow, I, I pray that you will delight in our great God and in Him tomorrow. May you have the opportunity, uh, by God's grace, to be able to gather together corporately for worship, though there may be some extra precautions depending where you are in the world that you may be having to take. I do pray that you have the opportunity to sit under the means of grace and enjoy all of the Lord's day as you seek to gather, to worship Him, to do acts of mercy and necessity, and that you would rest in God's goodness and His grace. Well, let's hear from God as we turn in the Bible to Matthew chapter 4, reading verse 10. This is one verse out of several, a pericope, a section, a passage, a grouping of verses here in chapter 4 that deal with Satan's temptation of Jesus. So we read in, in verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God in him only shall you serve. Now this is one of several of the study passages you see down in the description that I hope you'll take some time uh, to read through and prayerfully re reflect upon. Uh, in fact, we're going to do something a little different in today's uh, devotion. Uh, we're actually going to allow our theology portion that we're going to read here, uh, some catechism questions, uh, to be our uh, the directed answer and application for this passage that we're reading and the question that we're asking is we're seeking to answer it uh, and i do hope as you'll notice as you as you move your way through or as you listen to uh, these catechism questions and then you go down and read them for yourself in the description uh, and as you take a few moments uh, hopefully to read the passages that are connected those study passages you'll see that there is a lot of Bible going into uh, the creation of these catechism questions, that they might be of great benefit to you as we look to answer this question, what does the first commandment require of you? We'll look into our, our theology portion uh, for today's devotion. Let's start in Westminster Shorter Catechism, question 46. What is required in the first commandment? The first commandment requireth us to know and acknowledge God to be the only true God and our God and to worship and glorify Him accordingly. And then Westminster Larger Catechism, question 104. What are the duties required in the first commandment? The duties required in the first commandment are the knowing and acknowledging of God to be the only true God and our God and to worship and glorify Him accordingly by thinking, meditating, remembering, highly esteeming, honoring, adoring, choosing, loving, desiring, fearing of Him, believing Him, trusting, hoping, delighting, rejoicing in Him, being zealous for Him, calling upon Him, giving all praise and thanks and yielding all obedience and submission to him with the whole man, being careful in all things to please him, 
and sorrowful when in anything he has offended in walking humbly with him. So the answer to these catechism questions that answer the question that we're looking at in our devotion today, uh, they give us a full-orbed understanding of what the first commandment is requiring of us as we read it. And this isn't just what's required of Christians as they go to church. This is what is required of all people, men, women, boys, girls, every moment of their life. And we see an exhaustive list here brought together through the scriptures. You see down in the in the study passages there to help you better understand how this these answers were created, how they summarize what the Bible is teaching. But there's a, a, a seeking to yield obedience and submission in our entire being to our great God out of our love for Him. And also, rightfully so, a sorrow when He is offended, especially when we are the ones that cause that, seeking us to go to Him in repentance and desiring and asking for his, his forgiveness that we might receive that forgiveness. For our God is a long, long suffering. He's good. He's gracious. He's loving. And yes, he's just. And he's merciful. And I love the way that the larger catechism ends here with, and walking humbly with him. Walking humbly with your God. What a blessing. That comes right from Micah 6 8. He hath showed thee, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? O oh Lord, we ask that you would help us to do just that. We love you. And what a wonderful day it is you've given to us to worship you, to gather together with your people. We might worship you corporately. We pray, Lord, that as we rest in your goodness and your grace, that you would fellowship with us and through your means of grace, that we might grow in Christ's likeness. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, it's great to be with you for another devotion. Thank you for your patience as we're working through some technical challenges. And we do look forward to getting the videos back up uh, very soon. But until then, I hope you'll enjoy the audio devotions that we have posted for you. Like, leave a comment. Love to hear from you. Interact a little bit. Share with friends and family. Until we're together again, may the Lord bless and keep you.